Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel Pigskin Addicts back again with another video. So this video, I'm going to get into another NFL draft sleeper, uh, somebody who I think a lot of people are sleeping on. And you can see in his performance at the Combine, you can see in his tape that if this guy gets in the right situation, I think he can really, really be a good player uh, that can contribute to a very, very good team. And I'm talking about none other than Trey Palmer, wide receiver out of Nebraska. Um, now, I know Nebraska football isn't what it used to be, right? Nebraska football used to be the cream of the crop, right? It used to be really, really big. It used to be a uh, cornerstone uh, type of football program, right, as far as college football goes. Um, those days are long, long gone. And, you know, every now and then a, a, a product will come out of Nebraska, right? You look at a, a, a Dominican Sioux, right? Um, there's been a, a few other players. I think Levante David came out of there, right? Every now and then they have a guy that will pop and, uh, you know, make a career for himself in the NFL. And I think Trey Palmer is the next guy. Now, when you look at Trey Palmer, right, he started his career off at LSU. Uh, they did not have and they still don't have great quarterback play there. Um, they didn't, haven't had great quarterback play for a long time. So when you're looking at him at, and you're looking at his, his college tape, you're looking at some of his stats, right, you have to take everything with a grain of salt. This guy is very, very talented, but he has not played with any any uh, type of elite quarterbacking at all uh, since he's been in college. So when you look at him, you're looking at a prospect that can go into a system, right, like the Chargers, and, you know, pop right away, start making plays down the field, all of that stuff. So that's what I'm going to get into in this video, and uh, hopefully you guys enjoy. So Trey Palmer, he uh, his measurables, 6 foot, 192 pounds, and uh, 4, 3, uh, 40, right? A actual legitimate 4, 3, 40. Um, and I think the biggest thing with him, I think his size really puts him at an advantage in as far as this year's draft class goes. When you look at the top 10, right, the consensus, top 10 wide receivers, most of these guys, seven or eight of these guys don't even weigh anywhere close to 200 pounds, right? A lot of these guys are in the 170s. And unless you're blazing fast, unless you have blazing fast speed, right, you're going to have to gain weight. You're going to have to put some muscle on. There's no way a guy that is, you know, 170 pounds, right, is going to be able to take the punishment of the NFL for that long. So I think Trey Palmer stands out already with his size, right, six feet, 192. That's a pretty good size for a, a receiver, right, especially if you're comparing him, uh, you know, against everybody else in this draft. It's good size, and he has good speed. So I think he has an NFL-type body. So that's why I think he would be ready to play, uh, you know, day one in the NFL. Now, his speed is very, very um, unquestioned. I, I think it's unquestioned. It shows up on tape, right? He's a 4-3 guy, but it's not a track 4-3, right? When you watch his tape, uh, even if you watch his highlights, right, you will see that his speed really shows up. His speed shows up down the field. Uh, his speed shows up on drag routes, right? His speed shows up when somebody misses a tackle. He can get into the open field and he can create big plays. So I think that is something that if you're the Chargers, right, and you're looking to replenish this, 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 uh, wide receiver room, right? You know you have Mike, you know you have Keenan, you know you have guys that might not be around for too much longer, right? Because of injuries and, and contracts and stuff like that. Trey Palmer really does fit in with what the Chargers want to do. Um, now, when you watch him on tape, he is a very, very good route runner, right? I think that's something he doesn't get a lot of credit for. Uh, normally, when speed guys, you know, they go to the combine and they show off their speed, they get pegged as speed guys. But when you watch his tape, it's impressive, right? He was able to get open. He was able to use his speed, right? But he was also able to be physical at the line of scrimmage, right? Be able to get off of the line of scrimmage, some of the the uh, press man coverage that some teams tried to play against him. He was very good against it, right? So those are skills and attributes that do uh, translate to the NFL. One of the most impressive things that I've seen about Trey Palmer, though, was his willingness to go up and make contested catches and hold on to the ball after getting popped, right, after taking some big hits. Uh, he did it several times, right? When I watched his tape, he did it. I, I, I want to say I just, you know, just kind of glanced over some games, uh, maybe three or four times that I seen, and I, I was only able to watch about four or five games. So it looks like this guy can really, really make a difference at the NFL level. We know right at the receiver position, you're going to have to go up. You're going to have to make contested catches, right? I spoke about this uh, several videos ago, right? But that's what the NFL is about, contested catches. You're never 
really going to be all that open in the NFL unless you have, you know, a, a coverage bus, right? And you can't count on that every time you run a route. So you're going to have to make contested catches. You're going to have to hold on to the ball through contact. And that's something that he showed that he can do. So that is something that's definitely high marks in my book. Uh, that's something that I question a lot with these these smaller receivers, right? The Zay Flowers, the Jalen Hyatts. Uh, when you watch their tape, right, a lot of times they're running open, wide open. And they don't have to hold on to the ball through contact because they have open field in front of them, right? That's not going to happen in the NFL, right? You're going to have to be able to hold on to the ball through contact. You're going to have to absorb hits um, and do all of the little stuff, right? That's the little things that make you successful at the wide receiver position, right? It's not just about the big play and running nine routes. It's about sitting down in coverage, right? Being able to connect with the quarterback and also being able to absorb the physicality, right? I know receivers don't get hit a lot like they, they don't get hit like they used to but there are going to be times where you're going to have to absorb some physicality from bigger players right linebackers safeties things like that you're going to have to do that and he has showed he showed Trey Palmer has showed on tape that he can do that so I'm very impressed with him on that front now when it comes to the fit with the Chargers I think this is the best this is probably up there, I think, with Sam Laporta as probably being the most tailor-made fits for the Chargers, right? I think Trey Palmer can step in and start making plays immediately. And because he's a guy that is not heralded, right, he is kind of low on a lot of draft boards, right? He is not really in the consensus top 15. Uh, I have went through several, several mock drafts. I went through several of, you know, draft analysts, you know, their, their big boards, right, where they have guys ranked. Um, I've seen Trey Palmer ranked as low as like 27th, 26th, 27th receiver or something like that. And I think, you know, a lot of it has to do with, right, the, the, the school you go to, how much notoriety you have, right? All of that, I get it. I understand it. But I think he is really being slept on. Uh, and I don't know why. He has the physical tools. He really does have the physical tools. And I think he would fit the Chargers like a glove. What they want to do, especially with Kellen Moore, right? When you look at the Dallas Cowboys, right, over the past couple of years, they were able to succeed, right? They had two receivers, uh, C.D. Lamb, Amari Cooper. Both those guys got off, right? And they were able to get open. They were able to get open because of not just their skills, but the offense that they played in, right, the scheme. And I think Trey Palmer can really benefit from a Kellen Moore scheme. I think he can do the Chargers a whole lot of good if they were able to draft him. I think when it comes to free agency, right, the Chargers, you know, trying to save as much money as they possibly can. Jalen Guyton is a free agent, right? He's a free agent. He's also coming off of an ACL tear. Um, I don't think Jalen Guyton is going to be as expensive as, you know, uh, uh, Odell Beckham or one of these other wide receivers. But I do think that he would want somewhat of a pay raise, right? Because the Chargers offense did struggle without a legitimate speed threat. He knows that. They know that. So, you know, he has kind of some leverage, right, as far as negotiations go. That can all go out of the window if the Chargers decide to draft Trey Palmer. I believe that he will be there in the third round, right? I think he'll be there in the third round. And the Chargers can draft him, right? They can draft him and not worry about negotiating with Jalen Guyton. They can let him walk and they can replace him, right, with a guy who honestly is a better route runner than Jalen Guyton. Um, he's got about the same speed. Uh, I think, you know, Trey Palmer's speed shows up a little more. Uh, Jalen Guyton seems to be a straight line speed guy. When you watch the tape of Trey Palmer, right, he's able to take balls, right? He's able to take drag routes. He's able to turn some of those plays into 40, 50 yard gains, right? I haven't seen Jalen Guyton do that. At the NFL level, all I've ever seen him do is catch deep ball. So when you're talking about the versatility of a Trey Palmer, right, I think it is more valuable for the Chargers than, than the Jalen Guyton is at a, you know, a, a more elevated price than Trey Palmer would be. So I think Trey Palmer could be the perfect fit for the Chargers. And I also think that he can give you value uh, on special teams, right, in the return game, right, punt return, possibly kick return. He can also give you value there, too, because he is a speed guy and, uh, you know, he's a, he's a bigger body, right, so he can absorb some of those hits on special teams. So I think he has value all the way around. Uh, to me, like I said, this is a perfect fit for the Chargers. This is a perfect fit for the Kellen Moore offense. And this is a legitimate speed threat, right? This is what everybody has been calling for. And, you know, to be able to get him in the third round, right, for 
a you know a third round rookie on their rookie contract, right? It's going to cost nothing. And I think this guy can really, really, really contribute to what the Chargers want to do offensively. And uh, you know, to me, again, it fits perfect. It's a perfect fit. And I think the Chargers should make the pick if he is there. But that is all I got for this video, guys. I just wanted to come on here, talk about another draft sleeper, NFL draft sleeper, just like I talked about Laporta uh, the other day, right? So these these guys, they're going to show up. And this these are the value picks. And I talked about it, you know, in the video uh, that I did yesterday, right? Khalil Mack, Joey Bosa. The Chargers need to hit on picks. They need to hit on picks. They don't necessarily need to draft a whole bunch of superstars, but they need to hit on these picks. They need to draft guys that are going to contribute, right? Ready and willing to contribute and are going to do it right at a, a bottom bin price, right? That's that's what they need to do. That's what they need to get. And I think Trey Palmer can do that, right? You can get four years of good contributions from this guy, right, on a cheap price. So he's going to be there. I think the Chargers have to make this pick. Um, you know, they got to get some guys who are going to contribute. The third round pick last year was a disaster. JT Woods, we still don't know if he can even play football. We don't even know if he belongs in the NFL yet. So I think the Chargers got to stay away from that if they want to have some type of success uh, going forward, you know, 2023 and beyond. So they got to hit in the draft. This is a very, very important draft. And uh, I'm going to be covering as many prospects as I possibly can until draft day. So uh, be looking forward to that. But that is all I got for this video, guys. Uh, if you're not subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing down below. Uh, hit that bell notification as well, too. Uh, so YouTube notifies you when I drop a video. And don't forget to smash that like button on your way out as well, too. I'll be back again tomorrow with more content. And uh, until next time.